Today is July 1st, 2023, and I've been sent down to Area Zero with the hopes of capturing and researching all the Paradox Pokemon that spawn down here. I haven't been told much about them, but from what I do know, they're more likely to spawn if you eat certain sandwiches. And first on my list is Great Tusk, which apparently enjoys Ultra Tofu sandwiches. So I'm going to be making one of them in hopes to find it. So let's get to cooking. This setup may not be as pristine as the ones in mainland uh, Paldea, but I think for being down in Area Zero, it works. Do a do a quick taste test. On first taste, I can say the wasabi is very overpowering. I taste a lot of wasabi. Oh, oh my god. Uh <laughs> Uh Okay. So, yeah. No, immediately after my second sandwich, just immediate shiny great dusk. Um I Feel like a quick ball would look good in a quick ball. Okay, so yeah. Really cool, the beginning of, uh, I eventually do want to get every Paradox Pokemon shiny, aside from, like, Iron Leaves and walk, Walking Wake. Yeah, Walking Wake, just because, like, those can't be shiny. At least at the moment. So, uh, yeah, this is very quick. It's literally beginning of my second sandwich. So, so it definitely got a jump scare to me there. Like, if I don't catch it in a quick ball, like, oh well. But I think it would look really good in a quick ball. I don't know, that's what I think. Cool. Um, I'm gonna guess Sassy it is Impish. And it's not of a mark. From what I could find, apparently this Pokemon could also be found in the Asado Desert. And it's very similar to Donphan, which I have one myself. They appear to be fairly common down in Area Zero, in the area I like to call a loop. They spend most of their time wandering around together in giant groups. They aren't too territorial, but if you get too close, they will start jogging at you to try to get you away. Although they probably won't kill. I haven't tested that myself though. But on to the next Paradox Pokemon of Iron Treads. All right, let's get to making the sandwich. This is for you, Iron Treads. So, uh, falling apart a little bit here. It's for you, Iron Treads. This sandwich is okay, as long as you get all the flavors in it. Like, like if you don't have the cloth stick, then it's not that good. But, if you have all of it and it mixes well, it's a pretty good sandwich. Although, I might have added a little too much curry powder, is that overpowered some of it but after i finish this let's go uh let's go hunt for iron treads see if i can find it
Like Great Tusk, this Pokemon can also be found roaming around the Asado Desert, and is also a Paradox of Dawn fan. This species is a little difficult to find in the wild, but once you spot one, it should be very easy with their reflective silver body. Iron Treads are fairly aggressive, as if you get close to them, they will roll up into a ball and start chasing you, although they don't have the intent to kill, more just get you away from their home. Another thing that I noticed is that if two Iron Treads are on the same radio frequency, it will somehow stop all audio from going through cameras or microphones. I'm not entirely sure why this happens, but it's just happened in my experience uh, going for this Pokemon. But that's all I could find on Iron Treads, so on to the next Paradox Pokemon, Screamtail. Alright, next up for Fluttermane, we are making the Ultra Ham Sandwich. So, let's get to cooking. For once, at least the sandwich isn't overflowing, but it's time to hunt Fluttermane. This is a solid sandwich. Some meat and cheese and a pickle never goes wrong. Oh my god. That's a shiny Glamora. <laughs> um, <laughs> dude, Glamora looks so good. Like, I was looking at it, and I'm like, I don't think I'll be able to find, like, a Glamora shiny. Just because, like, of how uncommon it spawned. But no, that's just a shiny Glamora. That's insane. I don't know what I would have preferred, though. I don't know if I would have preferred a Glimmit, because, like, so that way I could... So that way I could evolve it into a Glamora. Oh, I'm trying to get both. Cool. Oh, shiny scream tail. Shiny scream tail. Nice. Okay, it was definitely much more noticeable than I expected, while being a lot less noticeable than I expected. I don't know, it's like a weird in between of noticeable and not noticeable. And I think, I think definitely the eyes sold it because initially when I was going for it, I wasn't entirely sure if I would notice like the eyes because a lot of them were turned around and I would just see the tail. But I think the tail was definitely noticeable enough that I would notice it. Yeah, very, very cool shiny. Very glad to find it. Nice, got it. Got Screamtail, impish nature. It is Dasa, and no mark. It's strong-willed. Okay, it did break out of a lot of balls. Let's send the box. Screamtail appears to be the paradox form of the Pokemon Jigglypuff, similar to regular Jigglypuff or Jigglypuff in my time period. Screamtail seem to enjoy puffing themselves up and floating around the land, although they don't get as big as some Jigglypuff. Screamtail generally prefer to live alone, as in my studies, I haven't seen too many in packs or together at all. If spotted by a Screamtail, even if it's in the air, it will start to run towards you with a big smile on its face. I'm honestly not sure if it wants a fight or a hug. I'm not going to test it out, though. But those are our findings on Screamtail. Next is going to be Iron Bundle. From my studies on Iron Bundle, I found that I don't really need to make a sandwich in order for them to appear. Uh, sometimes whenever I'm going for a different Paradox Pokemon, I'll just spot an Iron Bundle out of the corner of my eye anyway. So I don't really have a sandwich to make for those Pokemon, and so I'll just enjoy some Gorilla Bars. Wait. Yeah, it's a shiny uh, Iron Bundle. <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh, going for Iron Treads, I guess. Uh, this came after, I am saw my first sandwich for Iron, uh, for Iron Treads, dude. I'm getting, like, 
really lucky with these hunts. Just getting everything super quickly. Nice. Oh, I'm gonna guess bold. It is serious. Okay, and no marks. Uh, cool. Let's just send a box. Shiny Iron Bundle. Uh, another Shiny Iron Bundle. Oh, well, whatever. Okay. Out of all the iron hands around here, the one I happened to find shiny was Iron Bundle. Okay. Cool. Okay, hopefully <laughs> I don't phase again. Because of, like, all the uh, iron hands around here, but it's okay. I'm gonna guess. Let's guess bold. It is hasty and no mark. Alright, send it to the box. Iron Bundle. Seemingly the paradox form of Delibird. Which makes sense, as Iron Bundle can be seen walking around the land giving presents to other Pokemon. I don't really have too much information on Iron Bundle, as I never really focused on it too much in my research. But I can say Iron Bundle is not territorial in the slightest. If you encounter an Iron Bundle, go up to it and it will give you a present. Whether that present is good or bad is up to chance. But that, that's all I could find on it. So for the next uh, Paradox, it will be Brute Bonnet. All right. This is the Ultra Curry and Noodle Sandwich for Brute Bonnet. Not bad. Got a big bite of the bacon. Oh. That was quick. <laughs> that was very quick. This is my, I think, the beginning of my second sandwich. Ugh. Will a brick break kill? I don't think a brick break will kill. A brick break killed? Okay, never mind. Improved Bonnet honestly does look really good. Like, I really like how, um... I really like how, like, the purple... I really like how the purple is. Although, I do kind of wish that the, like, initial... Uh, like, like, the green part, like... The ivy, I guess? I don't actually know what it is. I kind of wish that was blue. Instead of just like the normal green that normal Brute Bonnet is. I kind of wish it was blue instead. I feel like that would make it like nice. It was very satisfying just seeing a bunch of Brute Bonnet wander on the map. But I'm glad that after the Scream Tail phase, which took like seven hours. I'm glad I got this one within two sandwiches. I'm going to guess. Hmm. I think it's Rash. It is, it is Clam and No Mark. Unfortunate. I'm still waiting until I get the marked Pokemon. It's for census, yeah. Uh, let's just send a box. Brute Bonnet resembles a Pokemon Amoongus, even to its Pokeball-shaped pattern. Luckily for us, though, it can be easily seen roaming around the wild in Area Zero, unlike some Fungus from the Unova region. Brute Bonnet don't appear to do much as they just wander around the land, seemingly aimlessly. Although, I do wonder how much they can see with the moss hanging in front of their eyes. Brute Bonnet are also very territorial, and will attack on sight, so I would recommend being wary of them. But, on to Iron Hands as the next Paradox Pokemon. Alright, well, time to make another Ultra Tofu Sandwich for Iron Hands. After this, should be able to find Iron Hands pretty easily. I would hope at least. To be honest, same as last time. Too much wasabi, I think, I put on. So that's a shiny dry cloak. Right? Shiny dry cloak. Out of all the iron hands that spawned. That's my second dry cloak somehow. Like, I have as many dry cloak as I have dreepy. 
Cool. So that, yeah, shiny iron hands. Okay. <laughs> I was not really worried about failing it, because, like, I, I knew what it looked like. But, like, I definitely saw that I could possibly fail it just because of, like, the fact it changes very little and just that it's, like, thighs go from black to silver. So, very glad I didn't, though. Very, very glad I didn't. <laughs> I really do wish that, like, its hands went, like, red or something. See, it's, like, it's a, sh it's a noticeable shiny, but I don't think it's a good shiny. Let's see if there's a netball. <laughs> Let's see if it, let's see if a netball works. Oh my god, it worked. <laughs> okay, I was thinking, you know, it'd be very funny if I catch it in like I think I had one netball. So it'd be very funny if I catch it in that, and I did. That's that's hilarious, actually. I'm gonna guess impish. It is. Imp it's impish. Got it. Let's go and no mark. All right, let's send that. Let's send that boy to the boxes. Iron Hands is a paradox form of Hariyama, which can be seen by how similarly they look, but not how they act. From my research, Iron Hands is very prideful. Each time it sees anything that moves, Iron Hands will rush directly towards it and initiate a battle in hopes to defeat its opponent to show that it is on top and is superior. But on the other hand, Hariyama initiates fights on opponents that it seems fit and worthy to fight it, not to defeat them in battle, but to try to get stronger by itself. As Hariyama ages, it spends its time training up Makuhita to get stronger, which I don't really know if Iron Hands can age as it's like a robot, but I don't think Iron Hands would want to train up Hariyama anyway, so. But on to the next Paradox Pokemon of Fluttermane. All right, for Fluttermane, we are making the ultra hefty sandwich. Let's see. You really get a first taste of all the meats. Man, it's solid. Oh, shiny. That looks so good. That looks so good, dude. Oh my god, dude, the white on it. Oh my god, that just... This thing genuinely looks so good. So I haven't taken a photo on this file. Oh my god. I don't know why. Like, this is the first one I'm genuinely, like, stunned about. And just like, oh my god, it looks so good. How do I take... Oh, it's down. Dude, that looks so freaking good. Um, Flutterman. Took me a second. I kind of... I really wanted a dust ball. I feel like that'd be perfect for it. And, like, it is nighttime, because I'm pretty sure Fluttermane, like, only spawns at night, so. Like, it, it just looks really good. Two, three, nice. Fluttermane in the Dusk Ball. And now, apparently, this thing is, like, really good for grinding money and EXP, so. Like, I genuinely will probably use this thing, uh, as, like, at, for that. I'm gonna guess, Sassy. It is quirky and no mark. Fluttermen are very similar to Mistrebus, not just in appearance, but in nature as well. Fluttermen spend most of their time floating around, looking for a target to either prank or directly kill. This Pokemon is very nocturnal, as it doesn't even come out during the day and can only be found at night. Fluttermen are not territorial in the slightest. Oftentimes they are seen floating around with members of the same species. And if you are spotted by a Fluttermane, they just stand there, staring at you. Observing your every movement, waiting for a time to strike. So I would recommend if if you get spotted by a Fluttermane, try to run away or hide as fast as possible. But on to uh, Iron Jugulus for the next Paradox Pokemon. All right, Iron Jugulus, got the sandwich almost ready for you. We got the Ultra Egg Sandwich. Let's see how it is. The red onion definitely comes in full force right here. Oh, 
Oh, that is a shiny, uh, shiny iron jugulus. I was looking behind me. If I, I, I was like, I was saying, you know, there are a ton of Pokemon that always spawn behind me, like when I'm running away. I look behind me, and that right there is an iron jugulus. This shiny looks awful. I'll be, I'll be completely honest. I think at, after I have found like all every. Oh, I'm speaking way too fast here, but I just, I'll be honest, like, Iron Jugulus is a cool Pokemon, but I just don't like it shiny, dude. I don't like that literally all of the Paradox Pokemon, the Violet Paradox Pokemon, just have their shinies be silver. Like, I just don't like that. I know I'm complaining, like, right as I just finished hunting an Iron Jugulus, but... I've just been thinking it, like, for a while, that just all the Scarlet, uh, Shiny, or all the Violet uh, Paradox Shinies just disappoint me. But that is a Shiny Iron Jugulus, and now there are no more Time Exclusive, um, Paradox Pokemon, which is nice. I'm gonna guess Timid. It is Brave and no Mark. Alright, send to the box. I often hear Iron Jugulus described as the offspring between a Hydreigon and a robot. And the more I look into it, the more I disagree with it. Iron Jugulus just feels more like a Hydreigon that was turned into a robot rather than like something completely different. Both of these Pokemon are brutally aggressive and prefer to live alone, and they're both fairly nocturnal as Iron Jugulus only appears at night and just does not spawn during the day. But that's pretty much all I could find on it, so on to the next paradox pokemon of slitherwing all right for slitherwing we will be making a great ham sandwich which is very similar to the ultra one just without jalapenos all right let's try it like the ultra ham sandwich it tastes like a solid sandwich I'm probably sure Slytherin will enjoy this one. Oh, shiny metatite. Cool. I mean, metatite's cool. I do like the shiny. It's a, it's a good shiny, but not too ecstatic, especially since I have one in um, Brilliant Diamond that I found, so and that's cool. Cool that I have it. Oh, shiny, uh, shiny Slitherwing. Dude, I didn't even notice it. I was just paying attention and then I ran into it. Yay. Cool. I'm very happy to get this second phase. I think it would look decent in the quick ball. Very happy to get the second phase. I was kind of worried about this going on for like way too long, but I'm glad I got it. And glad I caught it. Yeah, so that's really cool. Honestly, I always forget this Pokemon's name. Like, this is the one Paradox Pokemon that I just often forget the name of. I don't know why. I just don't necessarily remember it too much. It does, it is holding the booster energy, which I don't really know. Because, like, some are and some aren't, I guess. I don't really know, like, what makes it, but yeah. This is really cool. I'm gonna guess impish. It is hasty and no mark. All right, cool. Very happy to get this one. Slithering is a paradox form of Volcarona, but in direct contrast to Volcarona, Slithering moves around by walking on the ground instead of flying. Slithering prefer to spend most of their time alone, slowly walking across the ground, which I assume is to get food. Although they don't mind being around other Pokemon, they will attack anything that's unfamiliar to them that they see. But that's it for Slitherwing, so on to the next Paradox Pokemon of Iron Moth. Alright, let's create this sandwich. See? Oh, there it is. There it is. Uh, shiny Iron Moth. No, I want to encounter it, please. Okay, I was gonna- I was saying that I think Iron Moth would be very noticeable because, like, normally the things are red on it, but it's just, uh, 
very disappointed with a lot of the uh, with a lot of the Violet Paradox Pokemon. They just look too silver. I mean, this is a good shiny. It is a noticeable good shiny. But like, oh no. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Cool. Got an electric. The Iron Moth, honestly, despite definitely not having the best shiny, I do think it is a pretty cool Pokemon. So, very, very happy to get it. Um, I'm gonna guess. I think that's naughty. It is Jolly. Oh no, it does have a mark. Never mind, it does. We got uh the sociable. Okay. I saw title conferred and I was like, I don't recognize that, but yeah, okay, I guess just I just had to be in the box to change the mark, which is good to know. Iron Moth is an interesting Pokemon to me. It shares some characteristics with Volcarona, its modern form, as well as a lot of differences as well. Both maintain similar appearances. Both are pretty calm around humans. Iron Moth will observe from a distance while Volcarona will get a closer look, and they both share the fire typing. But that's where the similarities stop. Volcarona appears as a god to some. In specifically cold weather, Volcarona will come down and become a sun for people trapped in a snowstorm. But even in the coldest nights down here in Area Zero, Iron Moth never releases any heat. Maybe because it's a UFO. But on to Sandy Shocks now. All right, we are going to be making the Great Herb Sausage Sandwich right now. All right, Sandy Shocks. Not bad. I'm sure Sandy Shocks would like it. That's a shiny fan That is 100% a shiny fan Yep. Okay. I saw it like super bright and I'm like, that could just be the lighting. But no, that, de that definitely was not just the lighting. That's a shiny Fampy. Nice. Honestly, I'm happy with the Fampy phase. Okay, so it turns out I was not recording. I just looked over and OBS was just not on for Shiny Sandy Shocks. Uh... <laughs> I guess I'm glad I noticed it when I did, but that's still very funny, actually. Because uh, my reaction for it was basically, oh my god, that shiny sandy shocks. And then I encountered it. And uh, yeah, that's... I, I did that a lot on this hunt somehow. For some reason, just sometimes, I just looked over and I was not recording. And this just happened to be one of those times. So, that sucks. But yeah, my, my reaction wasn't big or anything. It was just like, oh, there it is. And then I was in the middle of saying, like, it looks noticeable but less noticeable than I expected at the same time. Cause like, sometimes the lighting would make me shine out super heavily on this hunt. Like sometimes I'd be staring at like a normal Sandy Shocks and then it would just look shiny. And then I would like, kinda like shine out on it. But this time I definitely didn't notice it. Definitely was noticeable enough, but I'm gonna guess modest. It is lax and no mark. Okay. Send a box. Sandy Shocks is essentially the opposite of its modern day counterpart, Magneton. Not just in the fact that one floats and one walks, but in their personalities as well. Magneton are quite passive towards new creatures and will simply observe them from a distance. Sandy Shocks on the other hand will run rather rigidly towards its enemy to presumably attack. Sandy Shocks are also not good in groups with each other as the electricity that they push out will then be absorbed by the other Sandy Shocks' ground type, meaning that the electricity just sort of dies out which makes them less powerful. Unlike Magneton, who stick together to cause major power outages. But on to the Paradox Iron Thorns next. That's next in my research. We are going to be making the Avocado Sandwich right now. All right, let's give it a try. All right, let's give it a try. It's pretty good, you know? I feel like it'd be better without the bread, but... Oh, Iron Thorns only likes the bread, 
So let's go find him. Oh, shiny Garganacle. No, I'm gonna fail it. Okay, never mind. No, I'm not. Shiny Garganacle. Whoa. Look at it right there. Yeah, you got it. Oh, shiny Venomoth. That looks really good, honestly, but, like, as cool as it is, it's not, like, Iron Treads, which is what I want, but... It does look really good, I'll be honest. So I'm, like, very... I'm very happy with it, honestly. I would have liked to phase out of Venomoth. And I did, so... I'm not gonna complain. Shiny Iron Thorns. There it is. That actually looks so good. Like, I was thinking it'd be like, maybe a little, oh no. I was thinking like, maybe it would be like a little different compared to like normal Iron Thorns, but no, that that is just a very big difference. That is just very, very different. And it, it looks so good. I feel like this is like one of the Paradox Pokemon that I actually really like, Shiny. Cause like, I don't know, I just think it looks really good. Oh, if only the green was red, then it would look good in a timer ball. Or look like it would match a timer ball. Yeah, like keep throwing balls. Oh, there you go. Got in a premiere ball. I think that, that fits it, I guess, although it doesn't have any red. I really wish the timer ball was green instead of red, then it really would have fit it. But yeah, honestly, a very good shiny. I definitely am very happy with it. Uh, let's check summary. I'm gonna guess... Let's guess naughty. It is serious. And no mark. Oh yeah, that, that looks so good. Definitely compared to the green. There's no way I could have missed this. Because like, I shown a shine out a lot on like the reflection, because it made it look silver. But like that, that was too noticeable for me to have not noticed. Some magazines state that Iron Thorns is from 1,000 years in the future. Which is a fine theory, except Iron Thorns exists now. During my journey through Unova, I was lucky enough to tour the Pokestar Studios and get to see some brand new movies. During my time watching the movies, I noticed Mecha Tyranitar, which looks oddly similar to the Iron Thorns found down in Area Zero. But as for Iron Thorns, it's very difficult to find in the wild as it spawns in very specific areas, and it spends most of its time walking around, which makes it fairly difficult to notice. Although most of the time they're also tame, if they get provoked, they will attack. So just don't make it mad. But on to the next Paradox Pokemon, Roaring Moon. All right, for Roaring Moon, we will be making the Great Cheese Sandwich. Not bad. Sure, Roaring Moon will like this, so. Oh my goodness. Shiny Dusk Lycanroc. That looks so good. That looks so good. This was definitely what I was hoping for most. If I could like phase on anything, it would be Lycanroc. But oh my god, that looks so good. Nice. Got in the great ball. Shiny Dug Trio. <clears throat> I saw it, and I'm like, its noses look a little different from normal. And then I walked over to it, and I'm like, yeah, that's shiny, that's shiny Dug Trio. I'll take it. I'll take the shiny. One, two, three. Nice. Shiny Gibble. Alright. Ugh. I have a lot of Gibble in this game, so I guess it's cool, but like, that's about it. Alright, got Gibble.
Oh, shiny, uh, Zwilus. Okay. Well, I'll take that. That's my second one. Uh, it looks good. I think it looks pretty good. Not Roaring Moon, though, which is definitely what I would have liked, as, you know, that's kind of what I'm hunting, but I'll take it. I do not have any Quick Balls. I will need to go buy some, I guess. Oh, there you go. Got it. In the Premier Ball. Oh, Shiny uh, Grievard. Okay. Cool. I was hoping to get a Grievard. So I'm, I'm happy I was able to. I'm happy I'm able to finally get one. So like that's probably what I wanted. Not really most out of all the phases, but no, I think it was probably what I wanted most out of everything here. Oh, shiny Sneasel. Dang. That happened very quick. Oop. That is very quick after uh, after the Grievard. Well, that's a cool find, I guess. I mean, not the Roaring Moon still, but I'll take it. It's, an, it's new. It's new. That's what I'm happy about. Is that it's new. Caught it. Oh, shiny Zwilus again. Okay. Cool. I was gonna say, now I have the whole line, but I can't really get a dino. So, I just have three Zwilus. Alright. Poop on to phase eight for Roaring Moon. Hopefully, hopefully it's time for it. There it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. That's the short, that's just that roaring moon. Roaring moon, that's a shiny roaring moon. I'm recording, okay, good. I would have actually cried if I wasn't. Oh, there it is. It looks so good. Oh, and it has a booster, uh, booster energy. Not really, doesn't matter too much, but that's funny, that's cool. Oh my god, there it is. It looks so good. It looks so good. I don't think insurance will kill. Okay, yeah, not not even close. Very happy that I can get it. It may have taken eight phases. Or this is this may be phase eight, but oh, I'm still very happy with it. That's like a really good shiny. One, two, three. Yeah, there you go. Oh, the shiny roaring moon. Oh, that's such a cool one. That is such a cool shiny. I am very, very happy with that. Oh, I have to get And it has a boost energy. I don't know, like, what are the odds of all the Paradox Pokemon having it, but I feel like it's just, like, a rare thing that they could have as an item. And I got the shiny with it. I'm gonna guess Adamant. I want it to be Adamant. Gentle. And no mark. Alright. Uh, send to the box. Oh my goodness. Uh I was just I, I I was just finishing off the sandwich for my initial shiny roaring moon and then I get this. <laughs> and then I get another shiny roaring moon. Oh my god. Oh it may have taken me two or like a week and a half to get my first roaring moon but then like 15 minutes later i have two of them oh my god i'm gonna guess timid it is it is quiet and no marks uh how long do i have left three minutes i still have Three minutes left on this sandwich, dude. What? Roaring Moon, the paradox Pokemon of Mega Salamence. Both these Pokemon have very similar characteristics. Both Salamence and Roaring Moon are brutally aggressive. If any person, or Pokemon for that matter, 
gets in their way, they will attack with the intent to kill. Both are fairly independent, often traveling by themselves. Although, I have noticed a few cases of Roaring Moon traveling in duos. When I first started studying this Pokemon, I noticed its similarity to the Crescent Moon. But after studying this Pokemon, I can definitively say that the phase of the moon does not affect when this Pokemon appears. But on to the final Paradox Pokemon, being Iron Valiant. All right, time for the final sandwich, the ultra refreshing sandwich. It was good, but there were a lot of contrasting flavors, so hope Iron Valiant likes it. But let's go for the final hunt. Shiny Grievard. What is up with my luck right now? Like, this is not even, like, half an hour after, uh, after the two Roaring Moon. We just immediately get a Shiny Grievard. That's, that's crazy. Dude, a shiny Sneasel literally next sandwich. Right now. Dude, I'm getting so lucky but unlucky at the same time. I'm finding so many shinies, but like, they're not Iron Valiant. <laughs> like, they're cool shiny Sneasel's cool, but it's not Iron Valiant. I want Iron Valiant. Oh, Shiny Sableye. Didn't even notice. Took a minute to notice. I saw some golden, but didn't fully like enter my mind what it was. Now that's a golden Sableye. Come on, Sableye, just catch. Please. Oh, there you go. Shiny Iron Valiant. That's that's it. This is the final Paradox Pokemon that I need. And it's right there. Shiny Iron Valiant. Uh, that's it. After this, this is the final Paradox Pokemon I need. And then, you know, I'm done. But yeah, it looks good, honestly. I like Shiny Iron Valiant. Like, I definitely don't like how it's just pure silver like all the other paradox pokemon but like it looks good it looks good i'll give it that one two three nice got it in the friend bow may have taken a few tries but i'm glad i did I'm glad i did i think it's a i don't really need it in the friend ball night does it look good but yeah, I just wanted it in the friend ball. Let's check summary. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess Adamant. It is hardy and does not have any marks. Iron Valiant is the only Paradox Pokemon that seemingly has connections to two Pokemon from this era, both being from the same line, Gardevoir and Gallade, and seemingly their Mega Forms too. It seems to inherit a general combination of both in appearance and typing, especially since it's Fighting Fairy type. It seems to take its personality more from Glade than Gardevoir for some reason though, as it's willing to slash down anything that opposes it, whereas Gardevoir would literally summon a black hole to protect its trainer. It doesn't seem to inherit too many traits from either though. It can't tell the future like Gardevoir can, and it can't read minds like Glade, which is probably for the better. But that is it for my time down here in Area Zero, at least for now. I feel like I know about as much as possible about the Pokemon I specifically researched. But that means that there are more Paradox Pokemon out there for me to find, like the Winged King, which apparently there are two that exist in this world, or Walking Wake, which, as of my knowledge, isn't in the Paldea region right now. It was earlier, but I don't think it can be found now, though. But recently, new Paradox Pokemon called Raging Bolt and Iron Crown have been discovered, but I think those are more for the future rather than now. But as for now, thank you for spending your time down here in Area Zero learning about Paradox Pokemon with me. 
I had a great time and I'm very happy I could discover all that I did. If you enjoyed this adventure, may I recommend checking out my friend who's currently adventuring through Ultra Space right now. He's discovered six Ultra Beasts and is currently going for more. I wonder how he's doing though. I wonder how he's doing. Thank <laughs> you.